guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. A few videos back when I was showing my little gnome village that I have in my craft room, some people had seen my little owl pin cushion. Now I won this on a blog for someone's birthday several years ago. When I was actually searching for these patterns, I was surprised this is the one that came up and it went right to that blog link. So I thought that was kind of cool. So when you guys saw this little owl pin cushion, everyone was requesting, oh, can you make one of those too? So I thought I'd go ahead. I haven't made one of these in many, many years. I thought, well, why not? Let's go ahead and make some owl pin cushions, right? These are my two practice guys. Some little hearts in purple. Strawberry kiwi with some green. And this little guy is what's caught everyone's eye. Now, as you can see, I made these just a little bit different. This person had used yo-yos for the eyes and they put a little piece of felt for the beak. We're not gonna be doing that today, but I'll talk you through how you can adjust it and make it that way. Now, when I was looking for the patterns to get the pieces again, cause let's face it, it's been a few years and I don't even know where the pieces are. If I still have them in my craft room, it's a mess. I found several different ways, different patterns. Everyone has their own different way. Uh, apparently it originated from a Japanese sewing book where they saw just the pictures because most of us don't understand Japanese, but you can follow the pictures from those craft books really easily. So if you ever come across them, don't be put off just because you can't read the directions. A lot of times you can just follow the pictures. They're pretty simple. But I did find some uh, reproductions where people had made their own little designs. Now this little guy here, I used this pattern from Moon Stitches. I'll go ahead and put links down below to all of the patterns that I found, or well, for the two that we're using today. And for this little bit larger guy, I went to So Can She. They have lots of free patterns for a variety of things. It's like one of the places between So Can She and So Mama So. Those are the two main places I like to go to look for free patterns. So we're gonna make another one like this guy. I just kinda like, I like the shape. As we're going through it, I'll show you the differences, but I really like the way this one turned out and this guy was much easier to sew than this one was. Now I'm gonna try my best, but big hands, little owls. I'll do the best I can to make sure we can see everything we're doing and as I talk you through it. If I cover up anything and you miss a step, please just let me know in the comments and I will fix it for you. The So Can She pattern came with two different ones. You had a basic size and a little buddy size. They just come out just a little bit smaller. She also had a way, she shows you how you can make it. I believe she made one that was 15 inches tall for a little stuffed animal for her daughter to play with. These, if you don't use, if you skip out on the button eyes and stuff and you do it really securely, you can put a little bit of catnip in these and let your cat play with them. But what I want to do is I want to make the pin cushion size. So the pattern she had available was the basic size and the little buddy size. And what she says is generally this top portion up here where the pin cushion is, it's the same for any of them. That's where it's going to start out. And then it just gets wider and wider depending on the size you're going for. But I'm going to be using the pin cushion size. So what I went ahead and did, and I used my little fancy manila folders, and I just went ahead and traced out these two pieces and cut them out. And I also cut out myself a little circle, and I'll show you where that goes after. But it's really it's just going to be to hold the bottom in and make it all nice and neat. I had to just kind of guesstimate on myself on this circle. She didn't have that included with the pattern. Now one of the big differences between the So Can She and the Moon Stitches one, this is the full size of the owl. This is, this is the back portion with all the hearts. And then there's the belly part. So this is basically the body is what they're calling it. But with the So Can She is you're gonna place this along the edge of the fold. I don't know, it just seems to work a lot better this way on the fold and having it more of a triangle with the rounded body than to wear this, you know, random shape here. They're so small and so quick, you can try both of them and decide which one you like better. So I decided for this one, I have some red for the tummy 
and I have some black background with red lips for the body. I'm just using a simple pen. You can trace this with anything you want as long as you can see it through the fabric. These little guys, I mean, perfect accuracy, 100% is not going to be that important. No one's going to really notice if you are a little bit off from the pattern. Now this one includes the seam allowance and this one you have to add your own seam allowance. So this one's got a lot of good things going for it. Then you're just gonna cut it out right on the line. I guess if you were making more than one of these, you could stack these up a little bit and they have a couple of straight edges, so you could use your rotary cutter and a ruler. So if you wanted to make a little army of um, owls, you can even cut a curve like this with your rotary cutter without the ruler, just kind of go slow. As long as you hold on to the fabric, you should be okay. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then just do them one at a time. Some projects are really conducive to making um, assembly line projects and then other ones it's it's just easier to do them one at a time this one i think i would mostly do one at a time just because of the way the steps are okay now at this point we are going to line up now you can see when i line this up that I kind of went a little bit, whoops. As I line this up, you can see I went a little bit further. I didn't trace, I didn't cut it out exactly, but it'll be okay because we're gonna stitch a quarter inch along here and it's not gonna be noticeable. It's good to put a couple pins in. Now when we do this, we're gonna stop a quarter inch from the end just because you're gonna to have too much bulk if you go all the way up to the tip. So I like to just stick my needle in at around the quarter inch mark, give or take. So I'm gonna stitch it from, I like to stitch from the larger piece down to the narrower, it's just easier. And I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna back tack at the beginning and end and stitch right along there, I'll be right back. Now I didn't show you right at the machine this time, these pieces are pretty small when you get over to the machine and it's a little bit hard with you have to have your hands in the way and it's going to be a little difficult for you to see but I, when i did as i said i back tacked there and i just stitched along and since you can see I, when i told you my little lip fabric went out a little bit i just followed along the edge of my red and i stopped about a quarter inch from the end now this when i was first making them these this was the part that was really confusing to me i couldn't really quite figure out what they were talking about Oh, and this is right sides together. You really can't tell because both sides are the same, but when we're stitching, you wanna make sure your right sides are together. We're gonna to take this unsewn edge and we're just gonna bring it all the way along and put it to here. Put a couple pins in it to hold it in place. And once again, we're gonna stop a quarter inch from the edge. Now as you're stitching this, sometimes you get a little fold and a tuck in here and it gets a little wobbly. Even the directions will mention that. So they said, don't worry about it. It all works out in the end. Just kind of line everything up to the best you can. Pop your pin in. And then we'll take it over and sew it. And there, both sides are sewn. Now you can go ahead and trim the top just a little bit if you'd like to get some of that excess bulk out. So I go a little bit past, about an eighth of an inch or so, just past where my stitching ended. I don't want to go too far down. The good thing here is, is if you, if you go a little too far and you end up with a hole, it's very fixable. You just pop it inside out or right side out. My little pokey crochet hook, it's kind of gentle. Now 
just kind of eyeball it, split the difference. I don't take it to the machine and press it or anything, but there we go. You see how nice this guy lays down? He doesn't have any strange real puckers or anything. He sets really nice. Well, this is the one I made using the other pattern from, from Moon Stitches. And because you have this, it doesn't go all the way towards the top that much. It kind of, it kind of gets all kind of bunkly and bumpily and he just doesn't sit very nice. Now the finished product, of course, he comes out just as fine. You don't notice anything, but I had a little bit trouble manipulating everything and getting it all to just lay kind of like the way I wanted. So that was why I went with this guy. He was nice and easy and simple and it lays nice and flattish. Yes, flattish is a real word. Now I'm gonna be stitching mine with some red thread. I did stitch these guys with gray thread. You can kinda of see it a little bit down there. But I got better than each one after it and it just becomes easier to stitch. But for your first one, I recommend using a matching thread. Now that we have all that stitch, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this down. This is gonna create the little beak and we're going to stitch it down right here. We're only gonna be stitching it through this front belly piece. We don't wanna stitch all the way through to the back. I like to take a little pin, make sure I'm only going through the front and not to my fingers. Just to hold that into place, you need an extra, it's like you need to have octopus hands. You need to have lots and lots of hands to hold this down. So go ahead and utilize the pin and let it help you. I like to double my thread, gives it that little bit extra strength to it and maybe I won't have to stitch it as much. And going up from the inside, okay, right underneath here, just tuck my little piece in there that's popping out, he'll be fine. Come up underneath and I'm just going to grab the underside of this to start with. Okay. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to stay underneath, go through only this piece of red fabric on the belly. This is where I was a little concerned where we're going to be able to see very well. Go underneath and I'm just gonna go up underneath the red part on the part of his beak that we pulled down. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll remove this pin. Bring the needle through to the inside. Give it a little tug. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this inside out. And I'm gonna sew it from the inside. Now the beak part is really thick. You can feel that. You can probably almost see, you can feel where the edges are. And what you wanna do is you just wanna carefully go through both pieces of the red on the inside here and through the beak. And you can just kind of peek to make sure you're not going through that outer fabric, the black piece. And we're just gonna give it a couple stitches down to hold it. Now you don't have to worry too much how messy this looks in here because it's going to be on the inside of your pin cushion. No one's gonna see it. Now what I do is I just keep peeking now what you could do here, since this is black, if you used black thread, it wouldn't be noticeable if you did go through. But this is not, if, if you're giving it to a cat, you wanna really tack it down well, and at that point it won't matter if it shows on the outside. But for a pin cushion, and we wanna keep it looking kinda nice out there, give it about three or four stitches through. Always checking to make sure you're not gonna go through. You would see the needle, you would see the needle right here if you were going through it. and go through that little loop twice and we'll knot it off. See, looking pretty good. Now an alternative to stitching it down like that is like this little guy, you can just get a little orange triangle of felt, just kind of lay it on there and figure out what size you want to cut. 
and then this one was just top stitched right down you just stitch right through it go through only the belly part and that'll hold down your beak and it'll also give you that little actual look of a beak because it is orange I've also seen people take orange embroidery thread and just stitch over and over and over through just the, once again the belly and then the little tip of his nose here the beak and then it'll leave orange thread there and it'll once again look like an orange beak I don't mind that my guys don't have an actual colored beak look he's got like an orange yellow heart there so he is all set I'm fine with it now we're gonna gather up the bottom so that we can stuff it I just use a single thread I tie a knot at the end I don't do the you can go all the way around and then take the two threads and tie them together I just stick a knot in it I like to go through the seam right here you see that right there through the seam and then I find if you were to try to stitch it this way it's a little you don't have much to hold on to so if you turn your guy upside down then you can kind of hold on to him down here while you're stitching now we're gonna make some pretty big stitches a half inch an inch long we're just using this to gather up and then we'll use some nice tight stitches to hold it to the bottom so you're just gonna go in, in and out rocking motion I just kind of push the fabric onto the needle you can stay a quarter inch half inch from the edge we don't need to fold it under as if we were making a yo-yo because we're going to cover the bottom of this with a piece of fabric so it's not going to matter you're not going to see how neat or any type of fraying back there you don't want to go way up into your owl pin cushion but you don't have to be exact you don't have to measure it or anything like that This is why I was saying I don't think this would be a assembly line person uh, job. I mean, you could sew all the bellies on and then you could tack all the beaks down, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem an assembly line thing. Okay, now I just, I'm a little short on my thread, so I'm just going to stick it in my owl there because now I'm going to stuff them. I just got your basic polyfill, nothing fancy. You could put batting scraps in here if you want. You could use cotton balls if you didn't have any batting. I guess you could use pieces of fabric. Uh, a lot of times when they're doing pin cushions, they will use the, the, the it's like lizard kitty litter type thing. It's uh, crushed up walnut shells. It's supposed to be good for your pins. Now, I don't have any type of a nut allergy like that, but some people do. So if you were making these to sell in your store, you need to make sure you let people know that it has walnut in it because of their allergies. You can do a combination. You could put a little, like a small Ziploc bag or a fabric bag in here and put rice in it if you want it to stand up really well. Remember, you're gonna be using it as a pin cushion, so whatever you put in there, you need to be able to stick a pin through it. And you just pull it, pull it tight. Now when you get to this point, you can pull your guy around and say, ooh, do I like the way he's at? Is he stuffed enough? Do I need to put a little bit more in? Sometimes you have to stuff it down just a little bit into the head to get it to be nice. Give him a little extra. We don't want him to be anorexic. And that's what your owl is going to look like. If you don't stuff them too much, you can get these little points of the horns to pop up. And then his little beak coming down. And then I've, I've got this really tight and I'd like to go ahead and just tie this off so it doesn't come loose while I'm stitching it closed. And now I'm just gonna randomly stick my needle from one side to the other just to go ahead and tie it off just a little bit. Nothing fancy, just back and forth. When you feel like it's enough, now we're gonna put something on the bottom here still, so 
it's going to be like extra insurance. Just tie it off a couple times. Sorry, I guess that was a little hard using red thread on here. I probably should use something a little bit lighter for you to see. But you're just closing it up. It does not have to be neat or pretty. Just tie it all up nice. Nice and tight so it doesn't fall apart. The nice pretty part doesn't need to be happening. So it's just nice and tight. Now at this point, you can take something and put it on here and kind of guess. Maybe you have a half a dollar or just cut out any type of circle and put it on here and see how well it's going to fit. You want it to be smaller than the bottom so that we really don't see it when it's sitting down. See how these guys are just a little bit smaller? Let me see if you see when you're matching it, it matches so well it's hard to see. Okay. Now for this guy, I would go ahead and use this lip fabric. But just so that we can see it better, I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of the red and put that on here so that we can see what I'm doing a little bit better, maybe. See, it's bigger than my circle. Now, this is just a manila envelope. This is a piece of cardboard from um, a fat quarter. I like to save all of those because they come in handy for times like this. I'm going to go ahead and trace this guy on here. It's nice and stiff. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. If you have something to trace, like maybe a, a Tylenol bottle, or like I said, a half dollar or a silver dollar, or if you have one of those little drafting sheets of plastic that have all the holes in it for you, you can get a nice perfect hole that way. Now on the back of my fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and trace around my cardboard piece. If you wanted to put some weight in the bottom of your pin cushion, because right now they're kind of cute, but if you're gonna actually use it and sticking pins in it, you don't wanna be chasing it around your sewing table. You can get some silver washers from like Lowe's or Home Depot and put them in there. You could probably put some, a couple rocks in the bottom or some pennies, some aquarium sand, just in the bottom of it that's gonna be away from your pins that'll give it that weight you're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and just roughly cut around it. Some say a quarter inch, half inch. I say, oh, this looks good. I'll go ahead and use some light gray thread. So maybe you'll be able to see a little bit better when I'm stitching it. You could double up your thread this time if you want. I don't really worry about it too much. I keep my knot on the side that I that I wrote on and this time I'm gonna do smaller gathers I'm sorry if you hear any loud trucks and banging my house has been kind of rumbling all day uh, in my Facebook group you can see where I put a picture they're doing some construction work along my street they've been at it forever they have some big crane bucket loader truck things and dump trucks today and they're taking out piles and piles of sand they dug a giant hole. I swear they're trying to get to the ocean floor and let it, because you know, in Florida, we're not that far from sea level. Sometimes we're right at just a little above, just a little below. With all the rain we've had, it's really filled that hole up that they dug. All right, so we're just gonna go around and round, take little tiny stitches. Again, some people like to grab both ends and pull them. I like to knot one end so I can just pull and not worry about anything separating. Go ahead and put your little square, or your, your square, put your little circle in there. It's kind of like making a yo-yo, but we're gonna have this little piece of cardboard inside. I just kind of move it around so I make sure all the edges are covered. Pull it tight. If you wanted to, you could you could crisscross from side to side and make sure you have it all laced up that way. Depends.
depending on how the piece is behaving, sometimes I just knot it right there and leave it at that. You can take this over to your iron if you wanted to and you can give it a good press. I'm gonna hold, I have the end that's coming out of the fabric there, I'm gonna hold it with my fingers and come back in and grab a piece of fabric here so I can knot it off and hold it tight. Always seems like we need extra hands when we're crafting. Okay, so there's my semicircle, and I'm going to use this to make this nice and pretty down at the bottom. Now, as I said, I have this light colored gray thread. What I want to do, if you're using exactly, if this was all black and this was all black and you're using black thread, you can stitch a little to here and a little to here and you'll be perfectly fine. But I want to go underneath the circle and then I also want to grab pieces of fabric under here. Let's see if I can zoom in to make it noticeable. Okay. Here's where my piece is coming off. I have it tied off onto the circle. I'm just gonna push my thumb down and it pops up here. So I'm gonna go underneath and grab a piece of the owl's butt. Let me uh, shorten my thread here a little. Okay, so I grabbed a little piece of the actual owl. Then I just kind of tip this back a little so that I can grab one of these folds. Any little piece of fabric in there you can get a hold of. Tip it back with my thumb again and grab some here. And as I come out of this owl, I'll go ahead and I'll try to grab a piece around this base piece also. You'll be able to feel that it's being secure and being held onto there. Grab some owl, slide it through. Because of the cardboard that's there, I can slide my needle right along it and it won't pop all the way through. But if you were using, if I had black on the bottom and black here, I could just use my thread and just go bit by bit and you wouldn't see it at all. And if it's for you and you don't care, then it doesn't matter. It's gonna be sitting on your sewing machine. They won't be able to see that part anyway, right? You could use some hot glue or some fabric glue and glue this if you'd like. Glue doesn't always do too well down here in Florida with all the humidity. But you can give it a try. Sometimes I like to make, I'll make one where I sew it and one where I glue it and try different ways. I just keep going around. Sometimes you go around once, sometimes you go around twice. Getting close to where I started. You'll be able to feel it tightening up. Nice and secure, it's holding everything down. Oh, a little stitch popped through, but that's okay, cause just go like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peek underneath and I'm gonna grab a piece of the owl butt. I'm gonna tie it off, go through the loop twice. Give it a nice tug. Then I'll just, near where I just tied the knot, I'll go into the owl and I'll bury the thread in there. Let's give it a little tug. There we go. All nice and neat on the bottom. You're not gonna see any of the spots where you gathered it up. Your stuffing's not going to come out. I think he's looking kind of cute already. Now we have to decide on eyes. 
Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to put eyes on it at all. I mean, it's your little owl. You could use felt. I don't have an example of felt, but when you go on to the So Can She website, she shows you how to cut out felt to make eyes. You know, you can do the background in white and then the center, make it black or any color you want. You can add in buttons like I do. I really kind of like to add the layered buttons. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been doing a button project. I'm getting a little low on buttons. My options aren't as good as they used to be. So this time I was kind of just using what I could find. I got lucky and I had some green ones here. I use just one layer on this guy for the purple. He's just kind of like a little incognito. Except you can do the yo-yo. What you can do is take, I have these blue buttons that I'm going to be using. Uh, owls have big eyes, so you can use a bigger button or you can just use some beads. I can look at it like this and say, okay, this is the size, this looks good on him. So this button, this button's about an inch wide. So if I wanted to make yo-yos, I'd have to cut out a two inch circle. And then I can go ahead and make a yo-yo. This is the part where it's gathered and then the lady just put a button to cover that. And then you can just tack all along here to stitch it to your guy. I would put the button on before I stitch the yo-yo to the owl. It's so much easier just to go all the way through to the back of the yo-yo than to try to do it here on top of the owl's face. For this guy, I decided I'm going to put this blue button on and then I'm going to glue a googly eye to the center. I know the blue doesn't really match or anything, but it's okay. He can have blue eyes, right? The purple guy, I used some purple thread to match and I just stitched. I put the knot in the back and I just stitched in and out, in and out to hold him on. But for this one, I just used embroidery floss. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch one of my eyes on with embroidery floss and then the other one on and just with some thread so you can see the different process for the two of them. And since I'm going to be covering it up with the googly eyes, it's not gonna really matter. So let's go ahead and stitch one on first with thread since my needle's already threaded. My needle's already thread. Threaded? Thread. Once again, I am going to double up my thread. Keeps it nice and sturdy so we don't have to sew as many times. You'll have to excuse my voice, it's feeling a little froggy today with allergies. It always seems to be tis the season. Now you get to decide uh, where you put eyes on a little stuffed guy kind of gives it character. You could go kind of tuck it underneath and have him have a little um, eyelid over his eye. You can bring him closer and further them apart. I like to just put them a little bit just so they're kind of touching the edge here and it, it extra helps hold that guy, his little beak down a little bit better. So I'm pick my spot. I'm gonna come through like this, in and out. And when I pull it through, and then I go through where the two threads are knotted. And that just holds it in nicely like that and it gives me that knot. I don't have to worry about the knot pulling through or anything like that. It's nice and secure and as I'm pulling on it, it'll keep it nice and tight. You could put, if you wanted to, if you had some larger, I don't know if my pins will hold it, but you can put pins in like this through the holes of the button to hold it in while you're stitching. Just be careful you don't squeeze it because you'll stab yourself with the pin from the back of the head. So decide, for me it's not gonna matter. Like, for this guy, I wanted to make sure both of them were side to side and not one up and down and one side to side. It's not gonna matter, it's a four button hole, plus I'm going to be gluing the googly eyes on. So I just go through and then I, I go ahead and let the button just fall to the side off out of the way. We're going to be tightening it up as we go. So the first couple stitches really aren't going to matter too much. Come back up through the button. Nice little tighten that one stitch up. 
it's going to keep loosening as we go and we're going to keep tightening it over and over it's a little bit of a process it's kind of hard to get around buttons like this so i just go back in turn it off to the side a little and push it through when you have double thread sometimes one thread will tighten and not the other so you just kind of have to separate them come on thread pull one thread pull the other there you go at least the needle doesn't fall off right i'm going to go back through one more time that's three and that'll be plenty to hold this in once again you would not give this to a small child because of the buttons and you wouldn't give it to your pet either we're just using it as a pin cushion we need to have it secure but we don't have to go crazy about it now i'm going to peek underneath grab a little bit of the fabric so that I can go ahead and tie this off even though I'm going to go ahead and stick my needle through the body to get to the other eye I want to tie this eye off so if something happens it'll have a knot to hold it secure and even though they'll be sewn with the same continuous thread they're kind of sort of almost technically you know kind of sort of they'll be held It'll be knotted off, so if one eye falls off, the other should still stay on. And I just poke my needle behind there, kind of find the spot where I think the eye might be. Pull through. Give that thread just a little bit of tug to make sure it's buried in the eye. Okay, you can see if you peek behind there. Remember, if I wasn't doing it for the video, I would use a matching thread, and it wouldn't be noticeable. Oh yeah, I remembered. So if I was doing the second button, I would just go ahead and do it. But since I'm gonna show you how to do that one with floss, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread because I wouldn't wanna do the second button. I wanna show you. So if you were going to be doing it, you just put your button on and just go through the same process that we did on that eye. So I'm gonna cut this off. You can use two strands of floss, three strands, four, five, six. Sometimes I use just whatever happens to be left on my bobbin. If I've already, when I split it, I only need three. I put the other three back on for the next project. So sometimes I'll just use that. You don't need too much of the length, maybe eight or 10 inches. It's gonna be too much and you're gonna be throwing some away, but I kinda like to have that extra thread to make sure I'm, I've got room. Now I like to put a needle on the and each end of my floss and I'll show you why in a second okay I have a needle on each end of my floss I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I'm gonna put my eye and once again I'm gonna go into the body and right back out sometimes floss is a little bit harder to pull through fabric okay so now you've got it dangling from your floss I go ahead and put a needle through each hole you could just thread one pull it through I could have threaded this needle pull it through take the needle off and put it on here but I don't know sometimes I just like to do it too then you can take your needles off because you're done with them so now I'm going to tie it with a surgeon's knot and that's just simply taking the left over right twice unlike when you tie your shoes just once so once again, I just put it through and put it through one more time. And that helps lock the floss. And then I take the right one and I put it over the left. Now sometimes I like to go one more time, right over left, just to make sure I have everything nice and snug and tight. And you leave a little bit of fuzz for like the eyeball and just trim it up close and then this will just have it's like a little eyelash it has a little decoration to it so i'm going to go ahead and glue my little googly eyes on so i can show you what mine looks like when it's done i just use some tacky glue to put these on if a little bit seeps past as long as it stays within the button i'm okay with it it's going to take a little bit to dry. I like to let it sit overnight 
This one, of course, is a little harder because it's got the embroidery floss underneath there. I might have to add a little extra to him. But so these are my owls. Gotta prop my little guy up with the pincushion here so his eyeballs don't slide up. But these are my owls. This is the guy that started the whole conversation. You can use any of the fabrics you want. They look really fun in Christmas and Halloween. These are nice little tuck-in gifts if you're doing swaps or if you have a quilty or a sewing friend that you'd like to send a little something extra to with maybe a little gift or just friend mail. It's really nice to just go ahead and make some owl pin cushions in their favorite colors. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I have no clue what we're going to do for a video next week, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. I'll see you then. Bye!